<laughs> was it? So I need that. All right, so we left off yesterday talking about the ohm meter because we've already talked about the voltmeter and the ammeter, and now we're just kind of finishing up with the ohm meter. And I've got a bunch of exercises I'm just going to pull out uh, and not do about kind of what we did with the ammeter. So we got the ammeter down. You either got it or you don't. So what does no meter do? Measured resistance. Resistance. It takes readings. With the circuit power in what position? <coughs> I got one guy in the back. Thank you, Steve. Off. Although this class, I don't, I haven't seen, I have not seen a problem with that. I have had other classes where everybody wanted to leave the power on. Well, works on the same principle. as the voltmeter. It has an internal battery. How many batteries does the Simpson have? Two. Yep, has an internal. <coughs> internal battery. That's not proper because it'd be batteries, but batteries um, to provide needle movement, to provide movement. And I have let's see, a pitcher of a simple ohmmeter. And like I said, we could go through all of the exercise here, but I think we kind of did that quite a bit yesterday, so we're just going to let that go. Unless you really want to, which I can see you don't. So we're, uh, let's see. So internal about Provide need of, why? Why do we need to zero it out? Okay, different voltage on different settings. Something else. <coughs> to account for the resistance from the leads. Kind of. That does help. Yeah. There's this. I like that about it. it does uh, zero out the resistance in the leads? Um, so let's just say. And the rule of thumb is you have to uh, zero it out every time you do what? Change the resistance. Change the resistance. Change the range. So let's say I select R times one, and I'm using it for a couple hours. Do I have to worry about zeroing out as long as I don't turn it off or switch? No, you might after several hours because the battery drains. Battery goes dead, so it changes everything. So that's one of the reasons why you have a zero knob, a zeroed out, because as the battery changes, it's going to change what's going on through the circuit. So I uh, need to zero out the meter because, because what can we say? Because the batteries get weak, the internal. That's why I always leave my circuit on and use the external battery, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, because, well, internal batteries get weak and, oh, how can we say this? And because different settings. Uh, you use different internal resistors. Ah, that works. So what is that little knob that you're, you're, you're turning? What is, what, what is going on inside there? It's a variable resistor. Well, that's what they tell you. But inside is a little critter. <laughs> yes, it's a variable <laughs> resistor. It's a little monkey, and he has to move this thing along the resistor. All right, All right here's where we're going to skip a whole page. Let's see. Yeah, so C D E, keep it in line, F, so therefore always zero out the meter. <coughs> Try 
try to use, I'll put try, try to use um, the center two thirds of the scale. Because you'll notice if you actually look at the scale, especially on the left hand side, it's all bunched up. It does. That's where I get a lot of this stuff. <laughs> I actually read the manual, and then I stand up here and tell you what the manual says. Because, and you're and and, Why do you ask us to read and outside of you, <laughs> this they're all shocked. Why don't you get that? In? <laughs> I I'm sorry. I'm speechless. You read the you read the manual. <laughs> yeah, City thinks it says it. Oh, you're right. Um, <laughs> you heard somebody else talking about it. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, well, I feel like this is kind of redundant. Do not use the ohm meter with power supplied. Power in the circuit. There, I've said that twice now. Let me get this straight. You're not supposed to. Wait, now you tell me? All right, so now that you've had some experience using a, the uh, digital voltmeter, how did you zero it out? Then what? That's it. And it what, automatically does it? Yep. Digital ohm meters do not need to be zeroed out. But for accuracy, <laughs> you need to <coughs> subtract um, the reading when the leads are touched, or I should say the resistance of the leads. Uh, subtract the reading when the leads are connected. Probably not the best way to say it, but I think hopefully you got what I'm saying. So especially when you start working on the battery project, it's kind of shocking how low the resistance that you're actually working with is. You're going to be working with a 20 watt resistor that is rather large and the value of the resistor is 0.18 and then we take a 0.18 and attach it to another 0.18 you'll see <coughs> um, and last point here there's a thing called a megometer there's no a meg ohm meter one word, are used to measure, large. say it, large. very Mega. high <laughs> values of resistance. So it's all used on the NICAD. You what? It says to use one of those on the NICAD to see if it's like... Oh, yeah. Some of it Twice. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm all right. <laughs> well under the weather. I'll be all right. I know. All right. We're going to shift gears now. So take a break. Take a breather, I should say, not a break. All right. We're going to talk about symbols and wires. Symbols. So by now, most of you have gotten pretty good with, with your symbols. Not everybody. All right. So we can all work together. What are some of our basic symbols? Well, how about a conductor? What is a conductor? Wow. Moves electrons. Wire moves electrons. <laughs> there are two conventions of how this is done. So this is the older version. Oh, older convention. And you might see a wire going this way, and if there's a wire going the other way, it's just going to go like that. And if you see that, that means that they are connected. 
And if you got one going like this, and this is not connected, it's going to go like that. Not connected. But then there's the newer convention. Gotta make sure you see them both newer. Where this is, keep it on the same side, not connected. So I tell you right now, if you're looking at a drawing and it got, it could have this up here on my upper left or this down here in the lower right. And you're like, well, what is it? And honestly, the only way to tell, Look at the date. <laughs> I don't know what date they changed it. <coughs> Connected. <clears throat> so you have to look for the other two symbols. And so you always look for the if, it, if you have one that has a loop in it, go, okay, that's not connected, then therefore that makes this connected. Or if you see one with a little dot, then you know that one without a dot is not connected. And that's the only way you can do it is kind of take a look at it that way. So that's a regular wire. What other kind of wires do we have that you've got to experience? Safety wire. Safety wire. <laughs> that is, he, is not, he is not incorrect. What? So if you have the newer convention, yep. how would you differentiate the newer convention from the older convention for, for the not connected and the connected. I just told you. So, oh, it's, oh, okay. So like when you're looking you're, you're going to get one or the other. You're either going to get all of this or all of this. You can't mix the two up. Okay. So there'll be one, like one part that's connected and one part that's connected. Yes. You either got in the red or you got in the blue. Okay. So, you can't, yeah, you can't. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could kind of mix it up and put the dot here and do that, but uh, don't. It might confuse people. <laughs> All right. So, yes, we have safety wire, which is not the other kind of wire I was thinking of. Yeah. Shielded. Shielded. That seems to confuse a lot of people. And the way shielding looks on a schematic... Yeah. Well, sometimes it'll just put like a circle. Um, if you have multiple wires, uh, it's kind of a figure eight. And what's really happening, well, I can write some nice notes here, shielded wires. So outer braiding. Outer braiding, which is made out of, uh, it's usually stainless. Or some sort of conductor. Is grounded at both ends. Now, I've actually seen some aircraft where they don't. But most of the stuff I read says you should do it at both ends and insulated from the center conductor. Do you remember this from the project, the continuity project? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the representation of the shielding. And so what's really happening is you take the shielding and it, it goes to a ground on one end and it goes to ground on the other end. <coughs> and the whole purpose of that is to, well, the shielding does give some mechanical uh, properties to the wire, kind of keeps from chafing and stuff. That's not the idea of it. The idea is that, like I said in the lab thing, one of the uses for it is a P-lead. And a P-lead <coughs> is nothing more than the, the, a wire that goes to a magneto. So it goes from a switch in the cockpit out to the magneto on the engine. And the thing is, when the magneto is grounded, it is off. When you unground it, the magneto is on. So it grounds back at the switch. So what happens is you here you have this magneto that's putting out 18 some thousand volts with this wire that is carrying a lot of voltage, kind of goes back to the switch. And so it's just this long wire that has, this, that has the tendency 
to create radio interference because it carries this, this high voltage back and forth. It's not that high there, but it's high in there just the same. Um, and so it can interfere with radios. So for that reason, it's wrapped in the stainless steel and it's grounded at both ends. So anything that can leak out is then sent to ground. So that's why you always see those as, as shielded. Um, oh, where am I here? All right, resistors. Which you guys have down now. Well, if I make it C, then everything's going to be messed up. <laughs> C, it's resistors. We have the fixed, which you are very familiar with. We have the adjustable. And the adjustables can get a little confusing because you have rheostats and potentiometers. Rheostat versus potentiometer. And both are a type of variable resistor. So let's see. Oops, that's one. One and A. So let me see if I can. A rheostat. is simply a variable resistor, simply a variable resistor. Use to control power to load. Power to a load. The correct term for the common terminal, the potentiometer, is the slider. I'll write that. The correct term for the common terminal. is the slider. I'm going to come back to that, so don't freak on me here. You freaked. Um, there we go. There it is. Rheostat uses two terminals. Potentiometer uses three. So there's your rheostat symbol, and that is a potentiometer, and there is that actual potentiometer where this actually slides around. So what do we call that? <clears throat> the slider. Let's just write that down. Uh, what do we got here? B, a potentiometer uses all three terminals. Enabling a variable voltage or signal to be tapped off from the slider. I found this note and I kind of liked it, so just I'll throw it up here. Potentiometers and rheostats are made the same way. same way, but rheostats are usually much, and I will use their word, beefier, beefier, as they're generally used in high power situations. Stat. Real stat 
used to vary the amount of current flowing in a circuit. So if I wanted to create something like a string of lights and wrap them around my instrument panel so that I could have lights around my instrument panel, and I put them all in series like that, what's the first thing that you would notice and think of about putting a bunch of lights in series? Oh, what? One goes out, they all go out. So that probably isn't the best idea. It's like Christmas lights. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, so what if I... What's that? Just saving power. It's all for one and one for all. Is that better? Yeah. Yes, you want waste power. <laughs> waste power. All right. And then I put a rheostat in here. Like a dimmer switch in a truck, a rheostat. So there's my rheostat connected in series. I like how um, this one here, figure 10-5, says rheostat, schematic symbol. And then this one says rheostat connected in series, but it's not the same symbol. So it's like, well, thank you for making my life even more difficult. So I will just uh, you know, do this one. All right. So I put a rheostat in here. Is my rheostat in series or in parallel? Okay, it is in series with the lights. So I would do, even though it wouldn't be that accurate, I would do the same thing here. So if the question is asked, where would you put the rheostat? The question, the answer is in series, series with the lights. Because you put it in parallel with the lights, that's going to get you nothing. And that's going to control what with the lights? Current, which is going to control what? Brightness. Brightness. Okay. Actually, I think the proper, I should say the proper, it's a variable resistor. And then potentiometer has the three terminals. So kind of do your potentiometer. So potentiometer. Potentiometer. Three terminal device and we'll say rheostat is more appropriately a variable resistor. But unfortunately, I've seen them both ways. All right. Can I move it? Really? I'm out of here. Yeah. All right. Circuit protection. <laughs> As I've explained to many of you, when you actually look at how an aircraft is physically wired, there's actually a bus bar inside the aircraft. And the bus bar, quite literally, like in my airplane, is a piece of copper bar that's about three-eighths of an inch wide by about a foot long. And there's a series of holes drilled and tapped. So you can actually run screws in there. And the circuit breaker is actually screwed right to this on one of the terminals. It's, there's no wire. It's screwed right to it. And then you have your circuit breaker. And then off the back, you have a terminal where you can screw your wire to. So there is no wire from the bus bar bus bar, bus bar, to the circuit breaker. And that's a good thing because the circuit breaker is there to protect the wire. So if I had a bus bar and I had a wire and then the wire went to the circuit breaker. That wire might get fried. Yes. That's how a house is a wire. Yes, it's like in the house, like a house electrical panel. Oh yeah, it comes off the post. It goes down into the breaker panel. Yeah, so nothing protects those wires, but it, it works for a house because there's no load on the other side. Between the, there's no load here. Well, 
Well, well there is a load, I should say, but the load the tips here. There, it was like kind of like a bus bar because yeah. you actually have to screw the circuit breaker into it. Right. To make it okay, so we're going to talk about houses. So, yes, you are right. <laughs> But in the much the same way, you also have, how did the power get to the bus bar? Well, the big fat wire came from the alternator and the battery to the bus bar. But there is protection against that. Usually, um, uh, what do I want to say, a current limiter or something like that, or a fusible link, uh, they, don't, they don't go out. You can even have circuit breakers on the other side. So, All right, circuit protection. So the circuit, uh, what do I want to say? What kind of circuit protections do we have? Well, this is all whacked out here. Uh, okay, so we have we can have a fuse. You guys all know what a fuse is because this guy burned a few. He burned a few of them up. That's why they're there. Nah, I just used the ten amp. A fuse. So a fuse blows. That's all she wrote, right? Uh, is it in series or parallel? Um, is it reusable? No. <laughs> They're expendable. Expendable. Um, how are they rated? Okay. Capacity is rated in amps. And you've all seen my little chart in my office about the alternate fuses because you know if you fuse goes out and you're out in the middle of nowhere what do you use gum wrapper, gum wrapper that's that's a low low amp a what paper clip all right now you're getting into a little bit higher amperage rating that's pretty high amp rating with the audible uh, <laughs> or you can get like an an4 bolt how big is that <laughs> Millimeters, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quarter inch bolt. That's your slow blow right there, right? <laughs> no, yeah. Um, okay, just making sure I got these. Uh, okay, so we got that. Um, current limiters, we have current limiters, I mentioned that. Um, well, they're like a well, kind of a, a wire that blows, basically. Uh, I wrote this. I'm not going to write it all. A current limiter, such as used in the armature circuit of a high current DC generator, is a form of a slow blow fuse that will accept a surge of current greater than the general generator rating. But if there is a continual flow of current in excess of the generator rating, it will open the armature circuit and remove the generator from the system. So. Um, current limiters. So we'll handle periods of current over its rating. So if it's like a 10 amp limiter, it'll go over 10 amp for a while. Then it'll blow after a while. Um, not normally something <clears throat> Replaced in flight. I mean, if you try hard enough, I suppose you can. <coughs> and that brings us to circuit breakers. What's the nice thing about a circuit breaker? Resetable. Resetable. And if you have a particular circuit breaker that keeps popping, what do you do? Just tape it on there, put something heavy against it, just hold it. That's what they're designed for, right? Oh, yeah. No. If you have a circuit breaker that pops more than a few times, uh, I wouldn't reset it. So, circuit breaker. I haven't talked much about the FARs. Also, it comes out of FAR 23, which has been significantly changed. But... They haven't changed <laughs> the Q&A question. So, uh, let's see, one requires 
that circuit breakers not be automatically reset requires that circuit breakers not be automatically reset automatically reset so it's not going to cycle itself back in you as the pilot you've got to do something reset the resetting must be manual All right, are they in series or parallel? Series. Okay. Uh, they are, of course, resettable. Um, let's say there's three types. And I wonder if I have a picture of the three types. Nope. <laughs> All right, in series, three types. What are my three types? Push to reset. Okay, so push to reset, some of you have them. You cannot, it's in contrast to the next one. So I'll push, push, pull. Push, pull. All right, so the push, pull actually has. a little piece on it, a little hat on it, where you can grab it and pull it out. Okay? So that's the push-pull. So as a pilot or a mechanic, if you want to lock something out, you can actually grab it, pop it, and pull it out on your own. A push to reset doesn't do that. You can't pull it out. It just pops out when it exceeds <coughs> its design limit. And then there's the toggle type. Which looks just like a toggle switch single pull, double throw, double pull, double throw. But you can tell that it's actually um, a toggle type because on the end, the little part where you, you flip back and forth, which is actually, is that the pull or the throw? The pull. Um, pull. <clears throat> I know. You say, hey, go throw the, we used to say that anymore. You know, throw the switch. Well, you move the pole. I don't know what to say. You say pull the switch would be more appropriate. So the pole part moves. Mm -hmm. So on the pole, uh, when you look at the very end of it, it'll have a number stamped on it, like five. What does that mean? Five amps. Five amps. So, yep. Yeah, so, and also the top of all the circuit breakers has the amperage right on it. So that's the toggle type. You are not, I, don't, I didn't write this necessarily, I don't think, but you are not supposed to, especially with this one. It's not a switch. So you're not supposed to be using the switch. Sometimes you'll see pilots using like a switch. Like, yeah, hey, we'll turn that off, on, no, back off, now back on. Uh, toggle types you can. It's, it's what they look like. They look like a switch. Are you not supposed to do that with the push-pull? I'm sorry, push-pull down here. Okay. You can't. You can't do it. You can't do it with that one. It's in reference to the drawing. Shut up. Right. <laughs> Uh, let's see, I would see three types of operation, of operation, as opposed to different types. Of circuit breakers. There is, this is, how do they work? Well, there's the magnetic type. Magnetic type. Uh, so when, and what's the purpose of a circuit breaker? Okay, we'll say protect the circuit. Actually, that is not the correct answer according to your Q and A. It does not protect the circuit. It protects what? Oh, we protect the wiring. I don't care about the component. So, the magnetic type. So. But it's usually already bad, so. That's a good point. So when it overamps, so it's protecting it against excessive current, current. current or voltage? Current. 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 Okay. So when excessive current flows in the circuit, this type, 
it makes an electromagnetic strong an electromagnet strong enough to move a small armature or trips the breaker. So excessive current causes an electromagnet to move a small armature. which trips the breaker. There's the thermal type. This has a bimetallic strip. What do you think that means? Two dissimilar metals. There you go. Bi meaning two metallic metals. So bimetallic strip. So you have the metals that are laminated together and as they heat up they warp one will expand at a different rate than the other one so when it warps it moves the switch inside sorry kevin it says move a small armature armature yeah okay. um, uh let me see uses a uses a bi metallic strip which when overheated, when overheated, um, so I'm just gonna say bends, bends and opens the circuit. There's a thing called a trip-free circuit breaker. Huh? It resets. You, it can, you can reset it. It's not automatically resettable. Once it pops open, it's open. So if it's still really hot and you try to push it back in, it's just going to pop back out. So it's got to cool down. So, the thermal overload <laughs> breakers are mostly are used a lot in homes. What's in your circuit breaker? Why, why are we talking about homes suddenly? <laughs> We're trying to sell our homes. I guess, yeah. <laughs> give me my card. A trip-free <laughs> circuit breaker. <laughs> Bunch of home inspectors in here. So the thermal switch cools down and connects again? No, you have to reset it. Okay. Remember, there is no such thing in aviation as an automatic resettable. Yeah. So it's like a cigarette lighter. Cigar lighter. We don't have cigarette Sorry. lighters in no. airplanes. No. We're, <laughs> we're fancy. If you actually look it up in the parts book, it says cigar lighter. At least the older planes do. So a trip-free circuit breaker. Um, and I'm sorry about this one, Brett. This one's going to bum you out. Will, um, Question. yeah, might be stupid. <laughs> I'll let you know. Uh, commercial airlines obviously can't smoke. Can you smoke? Yes. Legally, like. Yeah. You just can't get pulled over in the air. Like <laughs> 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 thermal protection on the engine is not going to be switched back Thermal protection on engine. Thermal protection of an engine? Thermal protection on motor. Motors. Motors. Okay. Um, <laughs> so if we talk about motors on the aircraft and the thermal protection, um, you're saying should that one have a thermal protection switch? Yes. Yeah, well, actually, remember, it's not designed to protect the motor from overheating. It's That's how it works to limit current. So when enough current flows through it, the bimetallic strip gets hot and then breaks open. That's how it senses current. But then it will be closed again if it is, uh, Well, yeah, then it can, but it doesn't carry, it doesn't bring the switch closed with it. The switch is now open or the circuit breaker is open. It's going to stay open until you push it. On the motor door? Yes. Oh. I, I refer you back to... <laughs> I mean, on starter, it is... Wait, what was bum me requires that circuit breakers not be automatically reset. So how many how many automatically resettable circuit breakers does an aircraft have? Zero. 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 Except for zero. Okay. If you're in air and your starter is overheated. Okay, so here's the funny thing since you bring up motors and starters. If you overheat your starter, 
What protects the starter from being overheated? Not a dang thing. You can burn up your starter all day long. Well, until it burns up. Then you buy a new one and they burn it up. There is absolutely no circuit breaker or thermal protection or anything on a starter. That was one of the questions on somewhere. Huh? That was one of the questions on somewhere. Oh, it must be right then. <laughs> yeah. Which is why in Aero 310, when you did the engine, or 312, and you got to start it, I said you got 30 seconds worth of starter usage. And after that, you had to shut down and troubleshoot because that's all you allow is 30 because students were burning them up, just running it, just cranking it over until either the engine ran or the starter melted. <laughs> what about the generator? Then the generator can have, depending on the generator, it can have that load limiter that, that opens, um, or you have a generator circuit breaker, which, which unloads the, um, you know, field. That one thing. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out when we get to that week. <laughs> it opens up the field. All right. So trip free circuit. Ah, you did. trip free circuit breaker will allow. I just want to get through this one thing. Will allow. I don't even remember what allows anymore. Um, you said it was going to bum me out. I know. Will allow the circuit. Will allow the circuit to be broken. Even if the pilot holds the circuit breaker in, or that tapes does. it in, or that does. That does. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, I'm not going to get into the pilots versus mechanics thing. Circuit breakers are designed to protect. Yep, it's on YouTube. Protect the what? Wires. Wire. That's a Q&A. Not the component. I do like what Dennis had to say about that. Why? Well, probably because the component has failed already, and now it's drawing way too much current, and so you might as well protect the wire. Well, that wire will start getting melty and start an aircraft fire. Uh, therefore, therefore, the circuit breaker, that CB circuit breaker, must trip below or before the capacity of the wire. So in other words, if I have a wire that can safely handle five amps, but not five and a half, what should the circuit breaker be? Five. I'm thinking four. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> under, so it should trip well before. And it's not left to you. I'm going to show you how to figure that out. And I don't need to write this. Aircraft do not automatic use automatically resettable circuit breakers. They must be manually reset. I've already wrote that. I don't know what number I'm at. Here, I'm at star. Um, switches. I am? That's because actually what I have here. Yeah, because you put 2B. Want an E? Where's D, though? Maybe it's little D's. D, circuit. <laughs> Switches. All right, the pole. What's the pole? It's the movable part. I'll put movable blade. And therefore, what is the throw? Number of paths. Ooh, I was just talking about this today. This is a law. Uh, switches are installed so that on 
is forward or what? Oh. Upward. Forward or upward? No, forward or upwards. 